Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Good. Yeah, really well, thank you. So glad to have you here talking to us today, Lucy. Thank you so much for giving me your time and giving us Pleasure. all your time and your brain. So thank you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, so before we get started, um, introduce yourself. Tell everyone a little bit about what you do. Thank you, Meg. Really nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, I, I mean, I'm a retailer of old, so doing what I'm doing now is quite a change. Um, I uh, actually started off as a UW uh, partner uh, a few years ago, uh, which is a fantastic way to start a little mini franchise, which I know, you know we've spoken about that before. Um, and I realised that Many people aren't all that great with money. Um, two women in particular, I remember, really stuck in my mind and still do. And we're kind of friendly still. Um, they're both very similar stories. They both had uh, been left by their husbands, like with kids, and they didn't know even how to manage a household finances. So it kind of got me thinking about what I could do. So essentially what I'm doing is I, well, I blog a lot uh, on the subject of women and money management, but I also um, have been busy creating ebooks uh, and matching spreadsheets so that anybody in there, any sort of season or, or, or phase of life um, can actually go to one of these toolkits and get a workbook sort of educational inspirational book ebook uh, and a matching completely done for your spreadsheet so actually when it comes to foundations you can kind of get your bearings at home if you're not quite sure where to start so that's pretty much what I do I also do some coaching uh, uh franchise uh, franchise freelance coaching um with a colleague of mine for corporate uh, clients and their employees all around financial well-being which is a really massive hot topic right now yeah, I love it. This is so good. And I think what I really love about your approach is because I don't know about you and I don't know about everyone else, but the word budget mm. kind of strikes this sort of really cold, shivery <laughs> feeling. <into myself. laughs> yep. So, but I love your, because um, your take on it is very refreshing. So in, in terms of, yeah, walk me through how... How do you think about budgeting and why do you think that you you do it differently um, than all the other things that are out there? Because I think you do have a different take. Thank you. Yeah, I think because I've I've learned as I've gone along like you do in life and it's, it's a really massive life skill. Like some people are really rubbish with cooking or baking. It's just something you have to learn and, and try and try again till you get it right. Um, for me, budgeting, because I've lived on my own, or apart from the last couple of years, I've lived on my own literally my whole adult life. So I've had a lot of time to practice. Um, but also when you live on your own, solo living is really expensive. And so you have to be really good with money. So I learned as, as I went. Um, but my philosophy on it, it's very much um, to kind of uh, steal that from a business uh, owner. So when you're looking at cash flow uh, planning, um, you're essentially looking at at least the next sort of 12 months ahead. And the reason for that is because it allows you to be completely visible uh, with, with what's coming up, what expenses are coming in and going out so you know what's going on so you don't hit a brick wall. So yeah, yeah. for me, it's really important that you actually look at a 12 month view. That is a real way to go as far as I'm concerned. You know, it really helps as well if you've got a variety of different incomes. So it could be that you've got um, a regular salary that is very consistent. Well, that's great. That can just plot straight into the 12 months. Um, but if you've also got the, uh, you know, it's like being self-employed, you know, your, your, your income can vary quite a lot. Uh, it can have real sort of seasonal peaks and shifts and troughs. Um, you know, you, trying to work with that or, or being paid bi-weekly can be really tricky so using a sort of 12-month view is going to enable you to have a really good plan of action for your year ahead and I think that's for me being the winning combination it's not it's not looking like a business format it's very much having a nice personal format and it looks pretty it looks very user-friendly and all the formulas are done for you as far as I'm concerned on, on a spreadsheet that's got to be done it's got its own inbuilt calculator but even if you're just doing it on pen and paper and you've got your calculator you know look every month for the for the year ahead um and every time you've finished your month you can kind of almost like a good bookkeeper do your own little recce just to see that you have reached where you were going to and if not then adjusting the few months ahead to make sure that you're going to stay on track that's so good and I really love that idea of looking that far ahead yeah because um, my experience with budgeting has always been it's almost like this week to week thing of like yep. oh just cut out the coffees that's always what people say isn't it oh what are you spending on coffee I'm like yeah. I'm gonna keep spending it so <laughs> yeah 
somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. But tell me, walk me through your, um, I guess your take on uh, what are the things that give people the most control when it comes to managing money? So from your experience, like personal experience as well, like what has what has been the thing that's given you the biggest feeling of relief and being in charge? Because I think as we all are looking around and everything, all the prices are shooting up, yeah. it can be really easy to sink into that like fear factor. So what's a tip that you've used that's been really helpful? Um, I think when you're thinking about the current economic climate, we've been here before many times and we will probably be here again many times in our life. Well, hopefully not too many, but we will be. It's it's learning to understand what that looks like. And I think when you are in control of your money, um, in as much that, you know, when you're driving a car, you're in control of your car, you're going down the road. If you see the traffic ahead of you on the motorway starting to slow down, you know, it's warning oh, what's going on up there. And you, you you know that you'd better start to slow down and take into consideration what's going on. If you're not driving, if you're the passenger, you don't tend to take much notice. And that's, you know, really obvious for your money as well. If you're the passenger in your... Um, in your financial life, you're not going to have a huge amount of control in it. It's when you're actually in that driving seat that you are. And I think it's it doesn't need to be that complicated, doesn't need to take much time. I think you just need to take the time uh, like you do anything else. You know, we we go to the gym, maybe sometimes, <laughs> um, you know, we, we clean our homes. You know, if your house is a mess, it's because you've paid no attention to it. Or, you know, like my ironing pile, it's horrendous. It's halfway up to the ceiling in my understairs cupboard. It's just embarrassing <laughs> because I haven't taken care of it. It's as simple as that. You know, if I was in control of it, I would just do it. So I think it's, it may sound a bit glib, but in order to be in control of your money, you've, you've got to be in the driving seat of it. So I think when it comes to cost of living, I'm not going to call it a crisis because it's just a challenge, right? We're all in together. It is a challenge um, to, to varying degrees, depending on what your income and your outgoings look like, of course. But, you know, it will mean steering your car a little differently, perhaps adapting your speed to what's going on. Um, I might have run out of um, analogies on that one. <laughs> but I think you know where I'm heading with it. You know, you, you, you know your food shopping is going to be more expensive, for example. So what do you do? Do you just cut back on your healthy eating? No, you, you just maybe you need to redesign your budget so that, you know, eating is still much a priority in your home. Maybe you look ahead and look at meal planning as, as a for instance, and actually attack it from a slightly different angle. Um, and just make sure that you're sort of you're just reeling it in and rounding it out in a bit more of a neater fashion so that it's got a bit of a plan to it I really like that and I think that's what's really important about feeling good about your budget because you're in control you're in charge aren't you so you're yeah. the person that gets to make those decisions um and you get to make those decisions based on your values and what you think is really important yes. so some people you know that's why a budget is so unique isn't it because yeah. some people just don't value the things that you value and that is totally fine but yeah. we do like sometimes to look over at what people are spending their money on and have judgments <laughs> don't we <laughs> like oh never pay that for a gym <laughs> but that's totally fine because that's yeah. their budget so yeah. how do you kind of help structure a budget so it feels I guess it feels really good and it feels really in line with somebody what would be your advice so it's funny you talked a lot about values there I just out of the blue yesterday came up with my own sort of philosophy on what budgeting is in my it, it sounds really profound I was quite proud of myself so um quality budgeting is a life skill and it merges your organization and your planning ahead with today's reality and tomorrow's dreams how do you like that uh, it is well, the, again <laughs> Quality budgeting is a life skill that merges organisation and planning ahead with today's reality and tomorrow's dreams. And it is the embodiment of your values and it always is a work in progress. So oh, really? your values are your values and your budget is your budget and it's nobody else's business. And this is really important. And I think when you're looking at if you if you Google budgeting, obviously you're going to get a million and one different things. But most of the time you're going to get some quite dry uh, approaches to it. You've got to use this method or that style or you've got to have that avalanche method. It's just like, oh, really? OK, well, 
I don't want a degree in maths to be able to understand how to approach my budgeting, which is why I do budgeting for beginners, budgeting for busy homo, uh, busy uh, parents, busy families, budgeting for first time homeowners, etc. So there's a there's there's a reason there's a way to approach something when you're in that particular season of life. That's really makes a huge difference. Yeah, and I love that because it is really about balancing today versus tomorrow mm. and bringing in the organisational part. So yeah. that's really good. And it is absolutely, it's completely personal to you yeah. because there's nothing worse. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this. You may have at some point in your journey, but sitting down and literally doing that dry as dust yeah. exercise of like something that someone's given you and being like, none of this reflects my life at all. Like that's not a line in my life. Exactly. <laughs> Where does this come from? And, you know, yeah. it's just that exercise. You just get to make it up for you. Yeah on what you want today and what you want tomorrow and I really love that balancing those two I think it's massive and I think you know we can all just get the calculator out and look and stare at our bank balance on the screen and look at our last few months worth of purchasing and think about our next few months worth of purchasing mm -hmm. just, just with it you know but you've got to go into it a bit more heart and soul to it than that otherwise you're just gonna just be doing a maths lesson and you know our lives are not a maths lesson you know obviously financial well -being under, yeah thank god I know right I mean financial well-being underpins everything you do and it completely marries up with your emotional well-being your mental well-being 100 yeah. percent um so of course you've got to get the maths right but it's not about the maths it's it's far it runs far more deeply than that and it's it's about what you want in your life and that would be a massive another tip from me is you know have you had that conversation either with yourself if you live solo um you know or with your partner if you if you have a partner because it's very easy just to keep doing the same things the same way the same month the same, you know and you don't nothing changes or actually things can change but not for the better it's not until you say do you know what's really important to us is let's do this yeah. let's go here let's try that and then when you've got your reason for doing something suddenly sticking to a budget doesn't feel like detention it actually feels yeah. like it's part and parcel of your lifestyle that you you want to create and I think yeah. that's massive that is massive and it's such a shift around it because it takes yeah. all of that deprivation or lack yes. feeling and that suffering almost of like, oh, I've got to give up the things I love to fit into this perfect box. That's not it at all. It's like you get to decide the things you really value and you want to spend money on really consciously. Yes. And you also get to decide what you do not want to spend your money on consciously and then just notice when there's a mismatch in your behavior versus your intention. Because that I think is huge because it's like unconscious spending, which can be very interesting, can be like this leaky bucket almost of things yeah. kind of going out here and there that you're just not conscious of. So I think there's a bit of housekeeping that you can do literally just to see. 100%. Like the 100% and it's interesting you say that because how easy is it these days or any, for some time now but it's pretty easy to spend money uh, because you're online and you just think you're on Amazon and if, oh, I, I was looking at that getting that book I'll just grab that book or yeah. you know I'll just go out and have oh yeah I'll just grab some lunch I'm hungry I'll just grab a coffee and a this that and the other and and, and I'll it's only a tenner it's only 15 quid it's only 20 quid but all of those it's only's Unless you're on, you're, you are spending with intention. Suddenly, those if onlys are a hundred quid in a month or two hundred pounds in a month, and you think, I don't know where my money goes. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, that's that's fine. So you now need to start thinking about keeping a track of where that money goes. And it's not until you get your your, your brain in that gear is that you realise. I mean, this is this is this is old hat from the from the health industry you know if you're thinking of cutting down the, the volume of food you're eating and trying to eat differently for your health and well-being if you say to yourself I'm going on a diet you want to eat biscuits all day long you know but if you say to yourself actually my I feel a bit uncomfortable in my clothes or I um my skin is not quite clear or I'm not feeling very energetic energetic I've got a bit of brain fog I really want to drink more water for that reason or da 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 You've got a reason for doing it, haven't you? And it makes so much better sense. And every time you go to, you think, okay, well, I'm still going to want a biscuit. But I think, I don't, well, you know what? I'm going to enjoy it. I'm not going to eat five. One's enough. Yeah. And it's the same when you with your money. When you know that actually every time you're spending out on another lippy or another whatever it is, that's just eating into what you said you wanted to do. And you're only really, you know, you're not doing yourself a favour. Yeah. 
That's so good. And it really is. I think that's a huge part about feeling in charge, yeah. feeling in control is just being really conscious of it. Not yeah. saying don't go and enjoy the things that you enjoy, but do it with conscious intention. Because yeah. you don't want to be in that position of literally looking around and being like, I literally don't have anything to show for this money, but yeah. somehow it's gone, <laughs> which can be the scenario. And that was definitely my experience probably mm. until about three years ago until I started yeah. running a business that was yeah. my experience because the money just came like a salary I, I was counting on it I was really unconscious of it really then I'd just spend stuff and spend stuff and then I'd be like oops all gone <laughs> so you had a really interesting story didn't you I, I loved your in a, in a previous um uh, session that you did and I was I was uh, um uh listening into your story yeah it's a really Wonderful thing. I've don't know if we've got time to talk about that now, or if you even wanted to. But um, it is really when you have that sort of consciousness about your spending, and you were talking about having a limit um, or an unexpected um, amount of money that you get down to every month. So for some people, you know, if you're in your overdraft, uh, five hundred quid, well, that's just normal. You know, it's almost like you've got five hundred pounds, not that that yeah, is borrowed exactly. money. It's business. your set point and you'll yes. go you'll take the actions towards that set point unconsciously yeah which is fascinating because yeah. there's always something driving it so I really love your philosophy on oh you just get to be in charge and get to weigh up in the moment do I want this today or do I want this for something that I've said yeah. I want in the future because that's what it that's what it is it's not robbing anything but your dreams later on and you just get to decide how you feel about it it's well, you know, you know how hard you work for it in the first place. It's not that it just comes in, you know, I don't know, three grand a month comes in, you haven't got to do anything for it. You've worked hard for it. You know, the effort you've put in, the getting up at six o'clock, the driving or the getting whatever it is you do, yeah. it's hard work, you know. And, you know, if you had money coming in where you didn't have to work, happy days. But actually, you do have to work for it. So every time you are unconsciously or in, unintentionally, making another purchase, another purchase, another purchase. How long did it take you to earn that money that you're just frittering away like it doesn't matter? So and that's really important. So, you know, yeah. if you're buying something that's 20 quid, whatever, I don't know, whether, whether that's an hour's worth of work for you or whatever it is, you know, that's got to think about that. Yeah, absolutely. And think about, do I like where I'm pointing that money? <laughs> do I like where that's going? Yeah. Or would I rather have the money? Sometimes yeah. we're just so lured into the spending of our present culture that yeah. we think the only reason to get money is so we can spend it on stuff. Yeah. But, you know, that's stuff, nice. Stuff's lovely. Let's be honest. We all like stuff. We, have, we like our we nice homes. Stuff. We like our, you know, it's nice clothes. I like to get our hair done, you know, whatever it might go on holiday. You know, of course we like stuff. Um, but. When you, I suppose it's another thing about getting a little bit older. I suppose you you look around, you think, okay, well, I've got some lovely stuff. I, when I go into Neptune, I'm like, I, I want all the stuff that's in here, <laughs> but I've still got some lovely stuff, you know. So I don't need to go nuts. But enjoy your money, you know. It's why you work so damn hard for it in the first place is to enjoy it. But it's just yeah. understanding, isn't it, about. Uh, is, is this little purchase going to really light you up and think, oh, I'm really enjoying that? And if it does, fine, brilliant. But yeah. if it's just something that you have totally forgotten about next, this time next week, maybe not so much. So interesting. So I've started putting a 24-hour pause on any online purchase. Brilliant. Which is brilliant because I actually, I actually did it without realising just because I forgot to check out of my Amazon basket. And I just noticed today, oh, I didn't buy that notebook. And I was like, do you know what? I'm going to wait another 24 hours. And if I don't remember it, I don't need it. I'm not going yep. to buy it. Little things like that. Because yes. it's so, everything is geared up for the consumer to spend more. Absolutely. Like everything. So it takes kind of a different mindset to not get involved with that and be part of that. And actually be really selective and say, I'm saving up to do this other investment that's really important to me. Yep. So all of that money is going to go into this pot over here instead of the things that I usually just entertain myself with when I'm feeling a bit bored. We were talking about something similar only last night and we were talking about watching... Um like binge watching on Netflix. It's the same sort of principle, really. You know, years ago, um, you'd have to wait a whole week for another episode of Friends. Oh, yeah. 
a whole week for agony. another episode. <laughs> it is agony, especially when Ross and Rachel, you're like, no, I'm going to wait a whole week. But, you know, of course now you just watch it to your heart's content till three in the morning if you want to. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love it. I'm, I'm doing a rerun of Downton Abbey. I'm very happy it's on. <laughs> I can watch it whenever I like. It's brilliant. Um, but the point is we are that culture where it's like you can have everything you want and now. Yeah, it's the feeling of it, isn't it? So when you oh, I need X, Y, Z. I couldn't be bothered to go to Tesco's because it's too far away. I thought I'd order on Amazon. I'd be here in the morning. And it was. Yeah. It's just like, wow. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and it's almost like we our poor brains don't stand a chance with the onslaught. Do you know what I mean? Of all of the things that we can have right now in this moment, our yeah. poor primitive brains are like in in Disney World right now. They're like, oh my God, this is amazing. I can have nachos immediately. I can have all the Netflix I want immediately. I can have a massive glass of wine immediately. I can buy online shopping immediately. So our poor brains, of course, it's hard to get our satisfaction elsewhere by waiting. Yeah, that is super hard. So I love that you're helping people do that, but in a really measured way, in a, re in a way that doesn't feel really um, restrictive, I think is the word of kind of like, oh, we have to really suffer, I have to really restrict and lose all the joy out of everything. No, that's not the case at all. You can be conscious and also say, and I want to have this delayed gratification yes. later on because I want to go on a really lovely holiday. Yeah. I'm going to put it towards that. But yeah, it is, um, we are kind of swimming upstream against that tide of instant everything now. Yeah. So it's no wonder we're all lying around on the sofa watching Netflix and eating all the biscuits in the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's what our brains want us to do. Yes, yeah, it's really comfy and really lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about um, if you, like how did you really start digging into what budgeting, what works and what doesn't, I guess? Was there a moment when you were like, oh, I see how how I can get more people to actually use this and use it in their day to day. Was there a moment that you can remember or one of the ladies, I think you mentioned one of the ladies had a story about, you know, their financial well-being. Can you recall? She, um, yes, I remember her. I, well, we, we haven't seen her for a little while, but her situation was quite painful. Um, and I just remember her, I'd gone round there actually, because I'd bumped into her randomly and we'd got chatting, what do you do, what do you do? And I still I help people out with their bills. I'm partnered with UW. And she went, oh my God, I need help with my bills. I said, oh, well, I'll happily come and help you, you know. So I went round there and cup of tea and, you know, bless her heart, she just felt that she could talk to me. She was telling me all about her husband and how, what he'd been up to and up to no good, essentially. And she didn't even know how to find out about council tax or anything. Oh, and she felt completely helpless. Yeah. And this is a lovely woman, you know, she's got skills, yeah. but, you know, she just, this particular area of her life, she was just like, I do not know where to start. And because when you're in that mindset of uh, overwhelm anyway with emotions of what she was having to deal with anyway, it was, it was an even bigger mountain to climb than perhaps it would be if you were in a bit more of a, a regular, not, not stressed out mindset. So anyway, that was kind of my, my, my main pivotal moment. I just thought I want to be able to help more women gain that level of confidence and independence that I've enjoyed all my life and taken for granted um because I've just just lived that way just through yeah. you know whatever it's just happened um and it was really important to me and I will never ever forget that day and how how bad I felt for her but also mm. really how lovely I felt uh in that she was hugging me and like like really really happy and so joyful that she now understood all this stuff and it wasn't a uh, something that she didn't that she couldn't tackle on her own anymore that's amazing and do you think, how do you think about um, that kind of fear factor? Do you see that as something that stops people from even looking sometimes? Yeah, there's many people. And uh, what worries me, I think, is that um, certainly in the next, let's face it, the next 18 months is going to be a little bit on the ugly side or lean side or difficult, or challenging side for everybody. And I, what worries me um, are people who are already not feeling confident, who are going yeah. to feel really under pressure and really frightened to even open up that bank statement. Or when you get a, a you know a text alert from your bank saying you're, you know, you're in your overdraft or you've got, to, you know, please open your email and it's going to send people into a bit of a, a, a mental spiral because it's just yeah. so much pressure they can't handle. And it might not even be as bad as they think. But when you're not feeling confident or reassured, then 
if it, it already feels so much worse than it's going to. And what worries me is people are going to just get themselves deeper and deeper into problems and debt and all the rest of it. Um, when actually, if by, you know, looking at it sensibly, um, uh, sooner rather than later it could avoid all sorts of problems I mean they're already talking about it on the news how you know some people may go through this and come out the other side in such a terrible state financially compared to other people who have thought a bit more clearly about it and um, actually can stabilize you know let's talk about we're talking about stabilizing in the government right now aren't we we need to stabilize our own homes you know stabilize our own finances because this this could be difficult yeah absolutely and I think almost the thought about you know I don't want to look because I don't want to see what's there mm. is the worst thing yeah. you can ever do because I've been that person literally burying my head in the sand yeah having bills upon bills and just yeah. not opening any of them and it just creates more of the same <laughs> nothing gets resolved it doesn't go anywhere it just gets worse it doesn't go anywhere it just gets worse you feel worse yeah. you create more stress and anxiety yeah. So it is that spiral. It is literally a loop of staying it stuck. Yeah. But the reason I'm so curious about this, because having been through it and worked through it, yeah. um, I think the main thing that keeps us there is shame. Yes. Or oh, that's shame. one of the biggest, the absolute biggest emotion that most, well, not just women, but I'm just talking about women at the moment. Women feel enormous amounts of shame and guilt um, about money and yeah. especially if you're a mum you know that I mean you are a mum so if you ever have to say to your to your your boys no you can't have that and because we can't afford it if that were your next sentence you feel terrible mm -hmm. because you know or you think other mums and other kids are going to be get, all, getting all the big presents and all the big gifts and the computers and all the you know but actually, that probably isn't true anyway. Uh, you're just no. telling yourself that. But of course, you're so used to being able to provide to a certain level that actually, because that looks a little different now, the the, the shame and the guilt that you can't provide is is can be absolutely massive. Yeah, and I think that's one of the most. Um, it's entrenched. Also, I think it is just. It's kind of been given to us as a thought. Because yeah. bearing in mind that up until I read a stat the other day, which was insane, 1988, before 1988, a woman business owner in America couldn't get a business loan without a man. Yeah. 1988? As late as that. What? I was yeah. like, come on. But it's no wonder that we've got a slightly messed up relationship with money. Yeah. Because of all that stuff. And it's no wonder that that like the narrative that has been given to women is you can't manage your money. Yeah. Basically. You or have like to have a man to hold your hand. <laughs> yeah, you have to have a man to hold your hand, leave it to the men to sort out the finances. And I think that has been given to women and our generation and probably our mother's generation has been the first one that's actually flipped that. So it's all still relatively new, if you think of it that way. It completely is. There's there's women now or, or you know, mums of some of the people I speak to or, or they themselves, you know, that maybe they've, they've, they've been through a divorce or they've lost their partner. Um, and actually opening up their world of finance has been huge. And I think a lot of women are very, by nature, just naturally nurturing towards themselves and their friends and their family. Um, so what's coming through now, really interesting uh, dialogue is around women investing. Now, I that's not my area of expertise at all, um, but it's it's a really interesting rumble now of women coming through wanting to invest money um, in their future selves. And I think that's a really wonderful nurturing angle we have you're about you're able to say do you know what me in 10 years time me when I retire I can see myself I want to look after myself now and I'm going to enjoy the ride and the thrill and, and the risk of investing now um, and going through that process so that actually I can become wealthy o over the coming years because you know investing is a long-term game it's not something you can nothing's going to make you money in a year you know you in it for yeah. several or more so it, it, it's very interesting that sort of um that culture is coming through now very very loud and clear which is absolutely wonderful and that's massively turning turning a corner and of course we've still got the pension uh gender gap you know that's still massive you know that it's just ridiculous um but we can go on about that for ages but <laughs> you know there's lots and lots and lots of stuff now that is hugely changing um yeah. for women in the in looking after their finances which is great 
It's so good. And I think it is, it is so important because when you feel in control and in charge, and this is also something I want to offer, is you can generate the feeling of being in charge of your money by just feeling and thinking it. And obviously there are actions related to it, but that sometimes the thought and the feeling has to go first yep. and that the action comes from it. Because that's basically, as a coach, that is exactly what I do. I look at your thoughts and feelings and the actions you take. So if the action you're taking is not budgeting, spending unconsciously, um, not looking at bills, try and track back to what is the thought that's creating it. There will be something underneath. There's a whole interesting piece on overspending. Um, and again, that's a big topic. And it's such an emotional uh, reaction to something, isn't it? It's like overeating. It's almost like a childish foot stamp uh, in that you think, well, I haven't got any money. And you have a little window shop. I think, right, sod it, I'm having it. Yeah. I'm having it because I want it, you know, even though like, you can't like afford it. Biscuits. It's like, well, I'll have the whole pack. Yeah. Because the thought is... I've ruined it now, I might just go for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going away anyway, so I might as well just spend it, basically. It's so fascinating. I think our brains are just endlessly fascinating. They so really it's never are. like, it's never just, oh, like, follow the budget, do the budget, it's easy as that. No. no. There's always, like, having literally set my own, you'll, you'll be, you'll smack my wrist for this, but my, my very first budget this year, what? I set, yeah, you're like, what? <laughs> I set my first budget um, and I spent a lot of time on it and I was so conscious of every single thing that came out of my, that I was paying money for. It was fascinating. And I just saw these big areas. I was like, oh my goodness, 30 quid on a thing that I didn't even know that I had bought like an, an app subscription just because I was disorganized and I didn't clean up my app subscriptions so none of that so that's literally just money in my pocket that I was just yeah. not knowing was going out so it's just it's so fascinating but when you go through that process that's the hardest bit is actually just sitting down and looking once you've done that the rest is like push pull you just see like which works what doesn't add a bit here take a bit there because it's like you want structure, but you want flexibility within the structure. It's you've got to have flexibility, otherwise, it, it that's when it falls down. You've yeah. got to be able to have something that you've set up that yeah. works and makes sense for you in your situation, and it's got to make sense. You've got to have, you know, when you, when you set up a diary, you know, yes, you can put in, I'm going to achieve ten things today. But you, you kind of think, OK, well, I will achieve five if I don't do any of those because something turns up, because something nearly always does turn up. The phone rings or there's something or there's a disaster or, is it, you know, whatever. You've got to have white space in, in, in your day, in your, in your money, because you're going to have stuff that happens. Oh, I love that. So tell me more about that. You've got to have white space in your money. I think when you're see I'm <laughs> I'm terrible in my diary I've got far too much stuff I pack in I know I do it to myself perhaps we need to have a chat I don't know but I've, I've filled my diary with too many things I get really cross on myself because I haven't done them but actually if I were my own best friend I'd say well why are you putting that lot in there in the first place you know you, can, you can't possibly do them so it's the same way if you're trying to stuff your budget with things that is just you know really is never going to work because you just yeah it's just it's just too stuffed too it's just not gonna, it's too constraining it's too constraining it's just not going to work and something's you know and within a month two months right it doesn't work I can't yeah. do much budgeting doesn't work it's like no it's like saying diary management doesn't work of course it does but you've got to make it work for you if you're putting too much stuff in you're always you're setting yourself up to fail in the first place exactly and I think do, so do you see this do you see that as a tendency people are like very all or nothing they're like right oh my god I'm going full guns yeah. I'm gonna do it to the to the literally to the penny and then like literally throw it out the window three months later because oh that budgeting doesn't work yeah because it was too strict yeah it's again we can we can go back to diets you know if, yeah. if if you need to go on a diet because you're going on holiday and you just realize you've got to get your, yourself in a bikini and you're now panicking fine you know do blitz and, and and significantly eat less so that you drop those pounds before you go on holiday which you're going to put back on on holiday but that's by the by <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you're if you're looking at changing how you eat and how you're consuming alcohol and water and all the rest of it then that's a longer term game you know you can't just go on a diet for a month and go right I haven't lost any weight that's it solid yeah. give me the biscuits 
yeah. it doesn't work like that you know everything you do has it just takes longer than you think it's going to and you're going to have to realize that actually you're not again going back to that I'm not on a budget I've chosen to live my life in a way that has a semblance of control over what I'm doing with my money I'm yeah. you know I, I look at my food cupboards and my fridge and I have chosen those foods carefully and wisely knowing they're best for my nutrition and health yes there's a chocolate bar in there and yes there's a couple of bottles of wine but that's fine it's all part and parcel of balance and flexibility isn't it yeah yeah I love that I love that so it's like you've chosen consciously to live my life this way but like, and base my spending on the things I value the most yeah it's not a budget no Oh, I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much. This has been yes, such a good conversation. Absolutely. Really enjoyed it. Thank I you. I love what you're doing. I think it's so good. It's so brilliant and so needed. Um, Thank you. Where can people find you? Where can people get more of you? So I'm on the usual social channels, uh, budgeting, uh, dot planning. Um, I'll, I'll put them in the link if if I may on your post later. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. yeah. My website is oh, well, it's on the screen, actually, budgetingandplanning.co.uk. Um, but all my social uh, media um, uh, handles, is that the right word? Num <laughs> names, whatever. I don't know what you call them. Uh, they're all you know, either budgeting and planning or budgeting dot planning, whichever I could get away Amazing. with. Amazing. And if there was one thing that you'd recommend people <laughs> do and buy on your website, what would be that thing? Where should they start? So on the front page, I've actually put the small uh, but growing selection of um, budget planning toolkits on there. So if nothing else, if you only wanted just to start with one something really simple, there's a £10 one on there that I've created on Google Sheets. And it just gives you that 12 month visibility. Okay. The other items are, are a combination of workbook uh ebook and um spreadsheet which is like 35 quid but this is a 10 pound one so if nothing else that will give you some really good ways in and simply to be able to just start doing this kind of stuff alternatively if ebooks are your thing and you wanted a bit more mindset work i've got free ebooks so i've got to put a couple of links to to those as well in the post um after this perfect thank you so much thank you thank you for having me all right bye. thank you very much bye bye